Uh, my talk today uh, is strengthening the water-related disaster resilience for sustainable development. I want to uh, start my talk with the short uh, introduction to history of the background of the sustainable development. As you know, in September 2015, United Nations and uh, participating uh, country uh, representative uh, at the UN General Assembly uh, agreed the sustainable development goals. It consists of the uh, 17 goals and 169 uh, targets. But we had a long discussion for developing uh, these goals, starting with 1972. First UN conference on the uh, human environment was held in Stockholm. Outcome document, only one Earth. The discussion completed. But at the end of this uh, conference, one participant from developing country mentioned. OK, so this only one earth, uh, the outcome document, emphasize to reduce the effect of the pollution associated with development on human health and the natural environment. That is the target of the, this conference. And at the end of the, the conference, uh, he said, we want to pollution. We want the pollution caused by development. We need a development for human uh, health and end of poverty and uh, improvement of the, the uh, education and uh, the uh, human life. So the, our discussion at the United Nations on the environment start with this south and north uh, conflict from the fast, uh, the, from the fast. And responding to the desertification and uh, a tropical rainforest deforestation, uh, UNEP meeting was held in 1982. One of the output of this uh, uh, the meeting was establishment of uh, one specific the commission. That was a Brundtland Commission. Uh, Dr. Brundtland, uh, was, became uh, the prime minister of the Norway. So uh, she led this commission and developed the uh, final report, or uh, uh, our uh, title uh, uh, of the, our common future. In this document, the sustainable development was defined by saying uh, humanity has the ability to make development uh, sustainable to ensure that, uh, that it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. This concept was fully agreed, and it was used as a basic concept of the uh, UN Conference on Environment and Development. This is the so-called Rio Summit in 1992. Based on the, this concept, the uh, Agenda 12, 21, and uh, climate change and uh, biodiversity framework and convention were established. Very big progress. However, after that, not just the practical achievement uh, uh, they have not been uh, the obtained. Then, based on the, the leadership of the past uh, UN Secretary General, uh, Mr. Uh, Kofi Annan, the, uh, the uh, Millennium Development Goals was developed uh, by the effort of central uh, officials of the UN headquarters. And the, to get the practical the progress, uh, the, uh, in, in 2002, World Summit on Sustainable De Development was held in Johannesburg as the 10-year anniversary of the Rio Summit. And uh, they agreed the plan of implementation. This is the uh, action plan. And then, the, uh, 10 years later, United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development was held in 
uh, Rio de Janeiro as a 20-year anniversary, and the future we want, the outcome document mentioned, uh, we reaffirm our commitment to making every effort to accelerate the achievement of the internationally agreed development goal, and we got uh, these goals. So more than 40 years of the long discussion, we are now reaching this stage. Water, the uh, clean water and the sanitation uh, the, is uh, the goal six. But as you know, water are closely related to other goals and target. This chart says group one target. Uh, the, uh, these are the strongly related to water. A group two target, these are the, uh, related to the, to the water. For example, uh, climate action, the uh, uh, target the 13.1 says, strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazard and natural disaster in all countries. And then uh, the goal, the uh, target 11.5, the, uh, the 11 goal is sustainable cities and uh, communities. Uh, the, this 11.5 emphasizes reduction of the, the number of deaths and the number of the people affected by the uh, disaster, and also the, uh, the decrease of the, the uh, direct economic loss uh, by the water-related disaster. So in this way, uh, water uh, is closely related to other target and uh, goals. I want to focus on the relationship between the climate and the water-related disaster and sustainable development uh, in my talk. So I, we will discuss about the one question associated, associated with climate change uh, do the heavy rainfall event increase in the frequency, intensity, and or amount? Yes or no? Maybe many of the uh, participants, the, yeah, this is yes. And shall we consider what is climate? What is the relationship between the rainfall and the climate? Without this kind of understanding, it's very difficult to say this is yes. So this is a really complicated chart, but uh, this is a flow chart of the global energy distribution after the, the uh, sun energy reached to the Earth system. If we uh, assume that the input energy from the sun uh, is uh, 100, almost half of the energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface including ocean and continent. They should be released. There are three processes for releasing this energy. Uh, one is the long wave uh, net radiation. It's a little bit difficult, but uh, the, uh, all materials emit uh, radiation it's depending on its uh, surface temperature. So uh, sun, they heat up the earth surface, and then the surface is uh, they warmed up. And then depending on the uh, temperature, the uh, earth surface emits the radiation. This is long wave radiation. During the daytime, the input energy and outgoing energy may be balanced, but at night, no input energy, only release. So that's why the, uh, under the, the uh, fine condition, the, uh, the relative cooling happens. But if there is some cloud, the, depending on the temperature at the bottom of the cloud, the downward uh, radiation happens. So that's why it, uh, it does not become uh, the cold. So we can experience this kind of the, uh, cooling or not cooling, uh, especially in the morning of the winter season. So this happens every day at the budget the 18 of the 47 uh, energy is released uh, as a uh, the radiation emission. The other one is the uh, sensible heat, uh, that is wind blows, and uh, uh, the energy of the surface is uh, transported from the surface to the air mass. 
then warm air mass is generated. And the energy is used for uh, evaporating the water, liquid water, to the gas phase, that is water vapor. So this is so-called uh, latent heat. That's why nearby surface, warm air mass and wet air mass is generated. What happened next? Okay. Uh, I want to uh, give you the two questions. Please raise hand the, 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 and, and show that your answer. Uh, warm air mass, warm air and cool air, or dry air and wet air, which is heavier? So cool air and warm air. Uh, those who think the cool air is heavier than warm air, please raise your hand. In the opposite way, uh, those who think the warm air is heavier than the cool air. Okay, Major, majority is correct, <laughs> okay? Warm air, uh, cool air is heavier. Okay, good. Next, wet air and dry air. Dry air. Those who think wet air is heavier than dry air, please raise hand. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that is the answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, the dry air is heavier. Those who think the dry air, uh, air is heavier than warm air, please raise hand. One, two, three. Okay. Only three are correct. Okay. I have already uh, introduced the answer. Anyway, uh, regardless of the kind of gases, the same number of molecules is included in a certain volume of gas under a certain temperature and pressure. Okay. No matter of the kind of the gases. If the same temperature, pressure, and volume, same number of molecules, are included in. Dry air consists of nitrogen and uh, oxygen uh, with uh, the ratio of 4 to 1. The weight is 28.8. And some of the molecules of nitrogen, nitrogen and oxygen are replaced by water H2O. That is wet air. So perfectly dry air like this, a little bit wet air, a much wet air, which is heavier. Dry air or wet air? Yes, dry air is heavier. Wet air is lighter. Okay, this is very important. So that's why warm air is lighter. Then it's going up and warm the atmosphere. Wet air is lighter. That's why it's going up. And the upper uh, air mass temperature is lower due to the lower pressure, then water vapor, the gas phase, is condensed into liquid. That is, cloud, cloud droplet is a liquid. Then the uh, huge latent heat is released and warm up the atmosphere. After that, the cloud droplet, the, this is liquid, meet together and become a big. Uh, the water droplet, this is rain droplet, and it's going down. So in this way, the water transport the more than half of the absorbed the energy by the earth uh, to the uh, upper atmosphere. And then our uh, earth system, uh, earth climate is generated. This is a vertical process and horizontal process. Uh, I have to explain this process in detail, but uh, time limitation. Anyway, uh, atmosphere of the ocean is much, wet, uh, much wetter than the atmosphere of a continent, and uh, wet air mass is transported to the, uh, over the uh, continent, and uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, condensed. it is condensed into the cloud. And, and large air mass is uh, released. And, and then the rainfall happens 
and uh, the, the rain is uh, uh, flow down due to the gravity uh, into the sea. So this uh, horizontal uh, water cycle also uh, work as a uh, Work to reduce the, uh, the contrast between the uh, atmospheric temperature over continent and over ocean. Anyway, uh, in this way, the, uh, our Earth's uh, the climate is generated. That's why the uh, rainfall and the climate are closely related together. That's why climate changes, rainfall changes. Rainfall changes, climate uh, changes. So then, in that case, is climate changing? This is a very big problem uh, the, of the IPCC. Uh, and uh, the, uh, at the fourth report uh, of the IPCC uh, in 2007, I work as a review editor of the, this uh, assessment report fourth of the IPCC, uh, working group one, and we finalize uh, the, our conclusion by using one sentence warming of the climate system is unequivocal. For Japanese, <laughs> the unequivocal is uh, really difficult to understand. <laughs> but uh, the, we use uh, the, this uh, sentence. In 2007, assessment report of fourth. Six years later, the assessment report of fifth was uh, published by adding the very advanced data and analysis result. But expression is just the same, you know? No change. Warming of the climate system is not key focal. Okay. So this is the result of our science community's the confirmation. Then, who or what does change this climate? So uh, assessment report fourth, the in collaboration with many climate center, we calculate the temp uh, at atmospheric temperature from uh, from 1910 to uh, uh, 2000 uh, uh, by assume, by introducing the observed uh, the uh, greenhouse gas concentration into the model. And the, in some, uh, at uh, some uh, climate center, uh, just calculate the atmospheric temperature by using observed uh, greenhouse gases uh, in 1910 without any change. The red one is the result of the uh, calculation with observed greenhouse gas in each year. And the blue one uh, is the uh, same concentration uh, uh, in, uh, observed in uh, 1910. So thick line is observation. So then we concluded that this uh, is very likely uh, due to the observed increase in anthropogenic greenhouse gas concentration. This is in 2007 and 2013 by adding more advanced scientific result, uh, the, the uh, expression, it is extremely likely that this caused uh, by the anthropogenic increase in greenhouse gases concentration. That is different. Uh, the, in 2000, very likely. This means the more than 90 percentage of the model uh, has a similarity. And uh, it is extremely uh, likely mean more than 95 percentage of the model shows a, a similar result. So this is also the, our result of the science, scientist confirmation. So uh, the, this change is caused by our human being. So uh, climate is changing. So in that case, why heavy rainfall uh, will increase? I would introduce one uh, the uh, process. Uh, as you know, the greenhouse gas effect, see, uh, sunshine is not absorbed by atmosphere, but the uh, uh, long wave radiation uh, from the Earth's surface is absorbed by greenhouse gases. Then the uh, lower part of the atmosphere, uh, the temperature uh, the increase. Okay? So uh, heat up the surface, and the surface, uh, depending on surface temperature, this long wave radiation, and this is 
absorbed by greenhouse gases. That's why the lower part of the atmosphere is heated up. The temperature of the lower part of the atmosphere increases. Then, depending on the temperature, downward long wave radiation increase as we land, like a cloud. And you can identify the disanimation once again. <laughs> I made the disanimation uh, orange to red. <laughs> okay. So surface is heated up more, then uh, more warm air mass, the more wet air mass is generated. They are lighter, that's why they are lifted up easily. And if there is a, uh, the, the air mass is lifted up, uh, from the surround, air mass is concentrated. And the top of the atmosphere is uh, capped by the stratosphere. So the, the air mass should go down. So then, the, uh, associated with global warming, this convection is accelerated. And the all of the atmosphere is mixed. And not only the lower part of the temperature, but also the whole atmosphere, the temperature uh, increase. This is global warming. So this process says radiation, convection, equilibrium. So the associated with global warming, convective system is accelerated. Then the heavier rainfall happens in a narrower area. So this is the basis of the heavy rainfall event, the increase and the intensity increase. So uh, based on the, this uh, physics, the uh, the report uh, in 2007, uh, assessment report false and assessment report fifth. In between, uh, the special report of the extreme was published. The, uh, this orange color from the AR4, this blue color from the SREX, and the black color, uh, black the expression from the uh, AR5. So the uh, heavy rainfall and drought and the tropical cyclone and high tide, the, the result is almost the same, consistent among the three reports. So this is also the proof of our confirmation of the scientist. So, and, so this is the, the statistics. The number of the, uh, the uh, number of the, the disaster event, including the uh, hydrological, meteorological, climatological, and uh, geophysical. Geophysical, the event, the number does not change. But the total increases. The, since the uh, 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 1980, uh, the up to now, almost three times increase uh, of the, the number of the water-related disaster in the world. So the, this is the statistics. So that's why <coughs> this question, answer, yes. Okay. So the, this is the, uh, our current situation. How can we address the, this issue? So in 2015, uh, uh, in addition to the uh, sustainable development goals, we agreed the uh, uh, Paris Agreement in December, and uh, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction in March. At this moment, uh, concerted action among these three are requested. So the, with regard to the, the uh, climate change and water-related disaster for uh, uh, contributing to the sustainable development, uh, we need to analyze the climate model output uh, downscaling bias correction and uh, co quantifying the uncertainty. The output uh, uh, the used as a, is used as the input into hydrological model and uh, the, uh, uh, the assess the, the change in extreme event and regime shift. But uh, the water uh, issue is strongly related to the environment, socioeconomics, and the history and the culture. And then we can implement uh, impact assessment. That information should be passed to the adaptation option, and this sound decision is making, is made. 
and it is implemented, the result of the implementation should be monitored and evaluated. One of the most important points is this uh, uh, uncertainty should be introduced in uh, decision making. This kind of the scientific and engineering and socioeconomic approaches should be deep integrated, that is so-called end-to-end approach on the climate change adaptation. So this kind of the, the uh, uh, systematic the approach are required. So finally, so concerted action uh, the, uh, can provide the reducing the current risk and preventing the future risk and adaptation and recovery capacity, then we can build a resilient society which can contribute to the sustainable development. For uh, development of the, uh, for establishment of the, this framework, we need to improve our understanding, not only our science, scientist understanding, but also society understanding. We, we need to support the uh, governance for the uh, sound decision making. We need to encourage investor to appropriate investment. And then uh, the early warning of build back better uh, should be supported by the science and, science and technology. So this kind of the, uh, the framework should be established. Uh, this is my message. Thank you very much for your attention.